Most tutorials that show you how to set up your Sony camera's custom functions and buttons completely show you the wrong way. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you the right way. You know what way that is? Your way. <laughs> That's right. When someone teaches you about how they set up their Sony camera, it kind of is a little bit of a paradox because they're trying to help you. However, what's great about these cameras is they're so customizable for how you shoot. And since each of us is different, we have to figure out a way to get you to set up your Sony camera for you. Now, I will show you my settings later on, but before that, let's talk about what you should think about. Now, the first thing you should think about is the purpose of setting up the camera is to avoid, as much as you can, diving deep into the main menu, page after page after page, to look for things. I want you to think about every time you find yourself deep in the menu searching for something, it probably means that you should set that to a My Menu, Function Setting, or one of the custom buttons, okay? So here's our three-pronged attack for avoiding the main menu. The first one are the buttons that are found on the back of the camera, the buttons that are found on the top of the camera. The second thing is our Function button, which gives us a little bank of you know, options. And the third one is My Menu. And My Menu is triggered by one of the buttons that you set. Now, what you set everything for depends on your type of photography. What are the needs that you have? Like, for example, I'm an event photographer, so autofocus and changing autofocus settings is very important to me. But if you do like macro photography, and you don't really need eye autofocus, then you don't need that as one of your buttons. So I want you to think about your type of photography and then think about what settings need to be at a moment's touch. Once you have a good idea of your needs and the changes that you'll be making for the type of photography you do, just think about your right hand and your thumb and index finger. Your thumb has access to the most buttons here on a Sony camera. You have three on the top. By the way, I'm using the a7 IV, uh, but this goes for a lot of the Sony cameras, what I'm doing here. You also have the little control wheel at the bottom. You have a button right in the center of the control wheel. You have your function button, and you also have your joystick. So your thumb is actually working a lot, okay? Your index finger turns the camera on, is the shutter. You also have two buttons available to you at the top and you can also switch between all the photo and video mode there. Your left hand is on the lens. Lenses come with a function button on there, and you also have one function button which causes your hand to come off the lens. Now, because the camera is so customizable, and because you'll be changing your mind as you learn the camera, the first thing we wanna do is set up our My Menu uh, so we go to the little gray star on the menu and at the bottom it says my menu settings and we want to add an item after hitting add an item go to the little yellow toolbox go to operation customize and you want to pick custom key dial settings so for me my menu setting on page three will always have custom dial setting okay now, the next thing I would recommend is to have a shortcut for my menu. Now, for me, it is the down direction on the little wheel. So every time I go down, it just goes directly to my menu. And the other thing I recommend is the menu setting is on the left side. There's a menu button on the left side on this camera. I make the center button on the wheel be the menu setting. That way with just my right hand, I could dive into the menu if I need to. All right, now we have a My Menu shortcut which will let us customize the camera as our needs change. This, that's the first prong is we're gonna set up all the buttons. The second prong attack, remember, was your function button. So if I hit the function button, this is the second place where things are if they don't fit on any of the buttons, okay? Now there's two ways you can kind of use this little you can use it any way you want, but in my mind, you can either fill up all the banks with things that didn't fit on the buttons, or one other way I've used this little function button, uh, the little function menu here, is to confirm settings. Like for example, if you're shooting an event and you're shooting to two cards, 
Well, one of the things you could do is put record media settings, for example, as one of the banks. That way, when you hit the function button, you're sure that you're, you're kind of like confirming that you're shooting in RAW and that you're also shooting to two cards. You could do the same thing with white balance to confirm your white balance. But by the way, all this stuff is on the informational screen here. For example, I see my white balance here. I see my drive mode. I see my focus mode. So I don't want to put those on the function menu here. So the things that I recommend filling up on the second wave are things that you probably might have put on one of the function buttons, but it didn't fit. And the third prong of attack is what we already set up, which is my menu. And here what you should do is each page should have a theme. All right, now you have your buttons as the first wave of control. You have your function menu as your second wave of control. And now you have a quick shortcut to get to my menu. So starting with C1, C1 is my eye autofocus button and right next to it is my AF on button. I use that as an autofocus button and the one next to it, C1, is IAF on. This is how I shoot all night because if I use the AF on button, the, the mode, the focus mode that I use is a large uh, flexible spot. This just means that it, there's a center focus point that if I focus on something and hold the button down, I can recompose the camera and that little focus point will track the object or item that I'm focusing on. And what's great is my eye, my face detection and my eye detection is completely off on the camera. And this is great because I shoot with a single focus point that tracks. But if there's a person in the scene, the button right next to this one, I just move my finger over and it grabs onto an eye, okay? And the reason I love this system is because if I try to grab onto an eye and the camera maybe grabs onto the wrong eye or is a little confused, I have my AF on, which is a single focus point. I use the large one so I could see it, but it's a single focus point that will focus on what I want. That's these two. Now as an emergency, one cool thing about the Sony cameras is you can actually, you can register a focus mode or a focus point, okay? So the third button here that, this is an auto exposure lock, I never use that. Uh, so what I have this button set up to is I registered a tiny single focus point uh, that's centered. Now I use this if, like for example, if I need to, if someone has their arm up like this and I wanna shoot right through, like there's a person's face back there, I may not even trust face detection eye because it's gonna pick this person. It's not gonna pick this person back here and my large area may be too large. So my third emergency, instead of going through the focus modes and making my focus points smaller, I've registered an emergency, tiny, small, single focus point in the center. So as soon as I hit that, it activates that small focus point where I can shoot through something. So I have the best of, the, these are my most used all night, Autofocusing and tracking that I, you know, for portraits, IAF is on. And then again, the emergency one is here. Okay. Now, speaking of emergencies, the C3 button is another registered button. What's great about these buttons is they recall settings. This one recalls autofocus setting. And my C3 is set up as an emergency. I have to get the shot. So this happens all the time when you're shooting events, like you're set up with you know, a certain white balance and with a certain shutter speed, like for flash or something, and you turn around and like grandma arrives to the party and is already hugging someone. That C3 button will, if I press it, it will auto focus. There'll be an auto white balance. We'll have an auto ISO. We have a shutter speed that's fast enough to catch action. So you can register a bunch of camera settings onto one button that are recalled as soon as you press it. 
Now my C2 button is my focus mode switch. If I need to change to a different focus mode or a different focus mode size, I can hit that one. And then my record movie button is actually my live view preview off button. Now the way I shoot, I use this button all the time because I'm shooting with flash. And when you put a flash on your camera and you're shooting in like low light, you don't want a real preview of the exposure because it's too dark, you know? So what you do is you turn off the preview that shows you what it really looks like, the exposure, and it gets brighter. So you kind of have like night vision. But when I'm shooting with flash, every now and then I want to, instead of having this night vision, I want to see what the real exposure is doing. So to do that, I have to, um, every now and then I press this button that turns the live view preview on, and that way I could see what the room is doing, and then I turn the live view, the live view preview off when I want to autofocus. Now, a quick note. This won't work if you put a Sony flash on a Sony camera or a Sony branded flash with the little pins on it. It won't work as well because the camera just is, it knows that it has a Sony flash on it. And as soon as you turn that flash on, the live view preview goes off automatically. So if you are shooting with a Sony flash, you'll need to turn the flash off in order to see the live view preview and then get your ambient exposure then you can turn your flash back on. Personally, I shoot with Canon flashes, so the camera doesn't even know there's a flash on top of there. And so I use this button to sort of show me the ambient room and then not show me the ambient room. Now, some lenses have a little function button on there. I don't really use those that often. Um, and I've also found that I bump them, so I can't make them something that's too, you know, like will make me miss the shot. So instead I made it a, a manual focus zoomer button. So if I go to manual focus, like if I'm gonna do some macro or something really close up, I don't need to autofocus. I can switch the lens to manual focus and then this, this lets me zoom in and get a little preview, which is kind of cool. Now the little joystick is a button as well. You can set that to be a button. For me, it's to recenter my focus. Uh, you know, like if my focus point is somewhere strange, I could always recenter it by pressing the uh, focus button. And my C4 custom button is white balance. That's just because it's always been white balance for all my Sony cameras. For the wheel, I left the two default to the display. You know, I can cycle through the different displays with the uh, up function. For the left, I've left that I've left that as the default, the drive mode that comes the camera comes that way. And then the right side is ISO. Um, that's one that I really haven't set yet. I, I've gotten so used to my dial being ISO that I actually don't use that one anymore. So that one right now is kind of an empty bank. And it's a perfect opportunity to tell you that you are going to change your camera around as you get more and more comfortable with it. So I would try buttons out and if they don't work out, you, know, you can change them again until you're sort of settling into a a mode that you love. And that's the, it's funny, that's the last one I haven't pruned is that ISO button, but I will use it for something else. I was thinking maybe like playback. You see the playback button down here? I can, I can never find that playback button so easily. So I may use the right, eh, show me the, but show me the pictures right away. Now the function menu, I won't go through. You could put anything you want on there in any order. Uh, so I put just, random things on there. And the whole point is that I don't really go into the function menu that often once my camera is set up. All right, check the comments because people will share what, how they set up their function buttons and you'll get ideas that will help you for the way you shoot. All right, I'll see you guys next time.